Hello, in this video, this is actually part one of the grid system and we are going to be initializing it and setting it up. So what's the grid system? The grid system will be the main aspect that the user will be interacting with on the game state. It's where the user will click, it's where the user's PCs will be placed and the AI PCs will be placed and where all of the good stuff will happen. So this is just the initial setup process. First of all, if you go to your definitions file, we are going to create a definition for the grid sprite. So it's going to do hash define grid underscore sprite underscore file path. And this is going to be resources for slash res for slash grid dot png. Save that. Now what you want to do is go to your game header file. Game state, I mean. So your game state header file in here. What we need to do is actually create a method. So void init grid PC. So we are going to initialize all the different grid pieces. So you know the X's, the circles, being able to place them at a later date. Now we need to duplicate this, and this is going to be the grid sprite. So underscore grid sprite, like so. Now we need to create an array of PC so SF sprite underscore grid pieces all of these will be one of the nine pieces that can be placed on the actual grid and now we're gonna have an int grid array and this will just keep track of what's actually in the grid at any particular moment in time so whether it's an empty piece circle piece or an x piece so if we save this now go to your cpp file let's just close this now because there's a little bit of code to implement here in the init method we can just load in another asset so if we go to here so load texture we need to load in this underscore data assets dot load texture and this is going to be grid sprite this is going to be grid underscore sprite file path duplicate these two and this is going to be x piece we already created the define for this so x underscore piece file path this is going to be circle piece circle underscore piece file path like so and now we just need to set the texture for the grid sprite so just duplicate this to save some time and this will be underscore grid sprite just rename this to grid sprite we won't be initializing anything like the actual x circle or the north circle i mean the x piece or the circle piece because they will be nine different sections and we'll be doing that in the init method that we created so now what you want to do is actually set the position for the grid so this is just going to be grid sprite underscore grid right and for the x value I'll, I'll actually remove all this in here it's going to be screen width divide by two so again the screen width minus underscore grid sprite dot get global bounds Dot width divided by two and so what we've done is just centered it in the x-axis and now we just want to center it in the y-axis so we can do that by simply copying and pasting this change this to screen height change this to screen height I mean height like so now we just need to actually call the init grid P it should actually be pieces so let me go back to the header file 
should be pieces because we're initiating or initializing all of the grid pieces here. And that error should disappear, which it has. Fantastic. Now, what we want to do is do for int x equals 0, x less than 3, x plus plus. For int y equals 0, y less than 3. So we're just going to loop over our grid array, which just tracks what's been placed already. And by default, each instance is going to simply have an empty piece because, well, there's nothing there at the moment. Nothing that we can see, I should say. And you'll understand why I said that in a moment. So if you scroll down, in the previous video we also added this code to test the game over state. We didn't remove it, just remove it and unpause the pause state code because once we actually get to the condition where we've won, lost or drawn, we'll implement the game over state code to transition to it. So if we just go to the bottom and add a method called void game state in it grid pieces. So in here, we're going to initialize all the grid pieces. First of all, get a create a SF vector to you. So this is an unsigned. And this is going to be temp sprite size. And what we're doing here is just getting the size of our sprites so we know how to position them. So assets, the sprites meaning the X and the circle, they're exactly the same size. Dot get texture. X piece. You can get circle piece, it doesn't really matter. I've just chosen X piece. So once we've got the size, what we want to do is just do for int x equals zero whilst x is less than three x plus plus now for int y equals zero y less than 3, y plus plus, and now it's going to do grid pieces, y dot set texture, and for the texture we are just going to put in this underscore data assets dot get texture x piece again it doesn't really matter what you set it to because we are actually going to be setting the opacity to well zero very soon so we can actually well we don't want to be able to see it but we just want a particular texture in there so we can actually in initialize it and set the position based on its size so now we're going to do underscore grid pieces x y dot set position so for the x value what we're going to do is underscore grid sprite dot get position dot x plus so we're, we're going to position it on the grid sprite and then we're just going to move it accordingly. So we're going to do temp sprite dot size dot x. So the width of it times by x. So you'll move across accordingly depending on where in the iterator it is. And all we want to do is do minus seven. So it's fully centered. Without it, it's just slightly off. And now what we're going to do is underscore grid sprite dot get position dot y plus I'm going to do something very similar so temp sprite size dot y times by y again it's going to position it down accordingly and just do minus 7 again and then finally I'm going to do underscore grid pieces x y 
dot set color and the color that we're going to set it to is ff color 255, 255, 255, 255, and this just, well, you'll see in a moment what he actually means. So let's just have a quick look, make sure everything's all good. Actually, one thing that we still need to do is draw the grid sprite. Now we need to draw the grid pieces. We can simply copy and paste this for loop here, like so. And inside here, we copy and paste one of these draw cores and just change this to underscore grid pieces x and y like so and now well that is it so if we run our application now build is successful fantastic that's always good when we get no errors we click run okay we have an error so key not found so file to load image res x.png and circle.png. So if we load it here, so x piece. Make sure we've actually named it correctly. Actually, yeah, the problem lies here. So if I go to definition, x.png, circle.png, and if I go to my project go to resources for example it is called it's what it's called and make sure it's actually with the product remember we did copy and paste it over so if we go to res x.png circle.png so that looks okay to me i'm happy with that resources res circle.png and x.png unable to open file ah resources hasn't been spelled correctly so if i go to here so we'll change that to resources resources neither has that one here so that was just my bad in a previous video i messed up sorry about that so now if i rerun this click the play button we now have our grid like so you might be thinking we don't want all x's here what we would actually do is go to our game state .cpp, scroll down where we've got the color value we leave the first three as 255 255 255 which is the red green and blue values by leaving it as that that means it is visible or it's actually using a white color which means we won't be affecting the color and if we change this to zero now we run it and our main menu click it and as you can see they haven't disappeared they're just invisible now and what we would do now in this video we're going to cover in a separate video because this was just the initialization when we actually click one of these sprites what will actually happen is first of all we would change the texture to a circle or an x piece depending on who is actually placing it there and then we would set this to 255 so that is it for this video if you have any more questions feel free to post them on our educational platform sonarlearning.co.uk if you want to check out the source code feel free there will be a link available with this video and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day